Hi everybody and welcome back to Crossout. I've been getting a lot of questions about the new cockpit cabin and whether this cabin can be used in certain situations regarding the cabin perk, which is, let's just start out with that. Cabin perk always increases booster charge by 50% and heating speed by 30%. This is not really what we're interested in, but the second bit of this cabin is at speeds above 75 km per hour, each active boost increases damage. This goes for common boosters, which gets 3% damage increase, rare gives 6% and epic gives 11% damage increase. This has led to some speculations on how this actually functions, especially because a lot of people like to run hurricanes on a sort of sky artillery, sky support build here. This is uh, something that we've seen quite a lot. And with the introduction of the new cabin, this might be more relevant as a fun little build than ever. In order to test this, I've set up a few different builds that we're going to use for this test. And we're going to cover in what way exactly the weapon, or not the weapon, but the cabin boosts missiles. This goes for do we have to boost while we shoot? Do we just have to boost when the missile impacts? Do we just have to boost while we shoot and not for the entire duration? There are quite a few questions to this and we're going to see if we can cover all of them today also we're going to see if something like the fire will be affected by the cabin and other sorts of things that we can come up with so let's start off today with just a simple pyre test the pyre test is probably the test that is the most relevant because it will sort of serve as a base for a lot of different weapons <clears throat> i'm using the pyre because the pyre is simply just holy <clears throat> simply just the easiest weapon to use for these sorts of tests because of the missile's flight speed. If we back up to the test vehicle here, we want to just make sure that we align the rocket with the vehicle. We do. And we go ahead and fire. We actually didn't align that. All right, let's try that again while we just spin ourselves here a little bit so we can actually hit it. We want to establish exactly what base damage the pyre has. So we shoot 116. I think it's for 116 point or 115 point something. Because sometimes when we get a hit, we also see 115. But most of the time it is 116. But we should be able to see a difference nevertheless. Because we have 10 boosters on this thing. Taking us up to a total of 110% increased damage. So, the way that we're going to do this is that we now know how much damage this deals. The cabin perk activates when we go above 75. So we're going to go into wheel mode here on the big rams. This takes us up to the speed that we need. Then we're going to just anchor ourselves to the ground here with a skinner and all we have to do now is simply just to boost we're going to do the first test here where we just boost when we shoot so we're just going to boost for a brief second while we shoot our missile and there we go 243 when we were boosting only as we shot the missile this already tells us that you only have to be shooting or boosting when you actually shoot so you do not have to boost for the entire duration this means that you can just Tap fire your booster like that as long as you just time it with the shot. We didn't really get to do that there. Let's try that one more time because that was actually interesting. Let's just see. Oh, we weren't moving fast enough. That makes sense. Let's just uh, get some speed going here again. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. Tap. And 243. So that at least that shows us. Now, one other thing that we should try now is to see whether we can boost as the missile impacts. So if I shoot now... And then we boost. And there we go. Again, 116 damage. We did hit the leg there instead of the cabin. But we still got the damage that we wanted. So, as of right now, what we can conclude is that you only have to be shooting. Or you have to be boosting while you're shooting. That's what I'm trying to say here. So, let's just do that one more time. We go up here. We shoot. We boost. 116. Now... Another thing that might be interesting here then to check is for the hurricane build while we just work with these missiles. Let's just turn right here. Perfect. I think we have to go just a bit further away from the Leviathan to make sure that our missiles have an impact. Now, does this also count when we are in air <clears throat> and technically not on the ground? This is something that we're going to try now. We're going to boost again and we're going to shoot ourselves up into the air. And I'm not going to boost. I am just going to shoot because we just want to get the uh, the base damage of the Hurricanes. We probably couldn't have gone closer to do that. 88 damage. And that also counts with the testing that I did before the video. So the base damage of um, Hurricanes are 88 
damage. Now, we want to get just a bit further away here. There we go. Do the same thing. Boost up. Keep our wheels running so we get that movement speed. And shoot our boosters while we shoot our missiles. It's very important when you do this, though. And there we go. 157 per shot. So, as I was saying, it's very important that you, when you do this, actually uh, spin up your wheels. Because if you just boost up, you won't actually get the speed. And that's quite interesting, because we have an oppressor on this build. And as you can see, the oppressor is actually getting speed from this. So, there are two different speed parameters in the game at the moment. One parameter, which the engine registers, and I am not 100% sure how this exactly registers as you can see it just when i'm boosting on this one we actually get speed on the oppressor so i'm assuming that this is any sort of speed vector that you might get in a direction and we get a speed vector down right now because i'm firing the booster down now we get a speed vector both up and around us and i think that is sort of bound to your engines but on the other hand for the cabin the only effect uh, effect that we can get here is simply just by the ground speed, which we can see on our speedometer, or our wheel speed rather than our ground speed. So wheel speed is something else, and this will be bound to other parameters. For example, the cabin. As you can see, we now get it even though we are barely moving. The oppressor is telling us that we are barely moving, but the second that I boost, we get our cabin perk. So we have two different speed parameters in the game. This is also the reason that some engines like the Cheetah, for example, can recharge super fast. If you have a guy playing a Fusion where he has a hovering wheel and he's running, for example, Shield Fusion, and then he runs a Cheetah with a, lot, with a wheel on it that just spins because then the Cheetah will constantly charge because the Cheetah is also bound to the speed on the speedometer. But the uh, Oppressor is not. That is based on directional speed. So wherever we move, which is just based on movement vectors i am no science expert so please don't quote me on any of this but just sort of get the basics in and i hope it makes sense to you guys so so far for the video we have concluded concluded the following the pyre is affected when you shoot it so as long as you boost when you shoot then the missile will get the damage this counts for all of these this will also count for any other shot weapon be it cannons rocket launchers Whatever we can really come up with, even Reapers, which are not hit scan but actually have small projectiles, auto cannons, all that stuff. As long as you boost while you shoot, then you will get the perk. That is sort of the basic conclusion. There is one more thing that I would like to do in order to just see if we can actually utilize this. If we now put the pyre onto the actual boosters themselves. Then we move out here and let's see if we can actually just bind these together so that you boost while you shoot and then you don't have to boost for longer than necessary. So once again, we are out here. We're going to skin ourselves to the ground. We're going to turn just a little bit and we are going to go into wheel mode so that we can get some speed going here. There we go. And the only thing we have to do now is just simply to fire our missile. 116 so we actually have to have these bound onto separate buttons let's just do that one more time to show you guys there we go yep 116 still so it is definitely a necessity to do so now what if we there we go now we can't even i don't think we we can really cheese that it is at least not a sustainable method to do so so what I advise you guys to do is get your weapons on one firing button and your boosters on the separate firing button. So basically what you then have to do is just boost, shoot, and that way you will get your damage. Now, as I said, this counts for pretty much any weapon in here that has a projectile. For hit scan weapons, you will have to be boosting while you shoot and the damage will be applied instant. So there's not really any timing to it as long as you just have your boosters active once you click the fire button then you'll get your bonus damage. What about something like fire weapons, for example? We have, let's just see here, if we can find it, that is, the incinerator. We have the incinerator somewhere. Here it is, perfect. So for the incinerator, I'm curious to see if that thing has anything different to it. Now we do need an energy here. Question is, what do we lose? I think we'll try to lose this one. And actually, we also have to take off some boosters because we do have something that we want to try here. So, incinerator. There it is. Perfect. 
and can we just stuff that in there yes we can and now we need two more energy so we're gonna do that we're gonna put an aurora on for this test because the incinerator heats parts in order to actually oh, and we just need to do this as well because in order to actually just make sure how much fire takes for per hit then we're going to try to heat up the cabin and we also just need to load something else here so that we don't get frames in on the in on the picture so let's load this leviathan and let's go again what we want to do here is we want to go and heat the cabin and once we've heated the cabin then we can shoot the fire so that we know that the cabin is heated then it's easier for us to calculate just how much bam the fire actually actually deals once we get over here so let's see can we get a good angle here yep we can shoot it right around there so let's start up by heating this thing to max i think that should be just about it there we go so fire takes for five damage per second very nice good the only thing we have left to do now is simply just to speed up once more see if this thing is done burning i think we have to reload it but five damage per second or per tick on the fire so if we just uh, go out here once more and we try to heat up the cabin again we just need this ground right here there we go perfect and let's see we can still hit the cabin there so once again heat up the cabin heat up the cabin perfect throw down the fire and five damage we're just not moving that's why that uh, this one is going to be a bit tough actually let's see how can we do this because right now we're increasing the speed by that much what if we do like that then we grab a skinner once again hopefully this will give us enough damage boost still i really want that anchor because it's going to help us so much so skinner onto a whoops separate button here perfect let's try that once more oh no it's on v that's not good because that's where our big rims are there sorry guys <laughs> now we should be there good so for the fire here we want to see with our boosters at the moment we're getting 44 percent extra so we should be able to see just a little bit extra oh move out of the way please yes 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 there we go perfect and anchor ourselves down go up with the wheels perfect and can we hit that with the fire that's actually a bit sketchy yep that's not hitting so let's just go down here for a bit and see if we can get even further away perfect now can we shoot it with the aurora that's the question no we can actually not so let's just turn a bit perfect and we are up anchor down and we can still not hit it okay let me just find a position where we can hit it and then we'll be we'll be ready i think we're going to go for the leg over here that we have a we have a good slant there we can stand on all right we got the speed going we're gonna boost and we're gonna shoot seven so there we go you actually can get damage buff to fire then the only uh, thing that you have to do is pretty much the same as with every other weapon you have to be boosting while you do it now we actually pretty much know all about all the weapons now and we can just briefly go through each of them just so that you guys kind of know what to expect from each of your weapons with the stuff that we have established now so if you go and sort by weapons here and we start with the machine guns well as i said hit scan weapons which machine guns are the second that you click where you want to shoot well then the damage applies it simply scans for a target where you try to shoot pretty basic and all of these will be covered all machine guns will be covered by that so you got to be boosting the second that you click then we have the reaper which falls in under a minigun right now but actually is in the same category as all auto cannons auto cannons shoot a projectile so while you shoot the projectile you have to be boosting but upon impact you don't necessarily have to be boosting the damage is applied to the projectile when you shoot it so the second you click again you got to be boosting and that actually counts for pretty much all of them shotguns are also hit scan weapons but in another fashion basically because the shotguns has a spread but it's still searching for targets it's just more projectiles but exactly same theory as with machine guns now when it comes to cannons same deal projectile just simply flying faster than the power for example but will still be applied as soon as you shoot so 
boost click that's actually pretty much the theme for all of them when we get down here now it may seem a little bit more absurd when you choose different types of missiles but still all of these shoot projectiles even if the retro doesn't connect until five six seconds later well then you still have to be boosting while you shoot and that also counts for something like this the synthesis prometheus and the helios are also projectiles when it comes to the shot itself you can connect just one of the five shots so it's not a hit scan same deal you got to be boosting while the spark applies damage while you're firing so while you're firing you got to be boosting and same goes for all of these pretty much Actually, it's quite interesting with the trigger. Should we maybe just test that? I actually think we should just go ahead and give that a test as well. Because I am unsure if you have to be boosting for the entire duration of the shot itself. But we can easily figure that out. So let's just go give that a test while we are at it. Now we want to again start out by just figuring what the base damage of a trigger is. So we anchor ourselves down. We give this one a shot. Bam, 111 damage. Now, what we want to see then is basically just whether... There we go. Whether we have to be boosting for the entire duration. So I'm going to start out by just boosting. Shoot. 120. All right. Wait for it to fully heat down again. And I think it is. Yep, it is. So we're going to boost and we're going to keep shooting. 160. So that's actually interesting. With the trigger... Where is it? There it is. You actually have to be boosting for the entire period that the projectile is sort of doing something. Even though it is a click fire weapon, you don't have to hold it down to get the full experience of it. You still have to be holding it down. The assembler. Now, that is another good question that I think we might as well just for the sake of it, give a test here. So if you move out here once again, we want to establish whether you have to hold it down for the entire charge period or if you can just hold it down at the very end now it's going to be a bit of a challenge here to make sure that we get the exact same damage so i'm just going to take a couple of shots here to first of all figure out how much damage this actually deals so 260 the skinner is actually messing it up for a bit here it's quite hard to see one or two full charged 262 so around 260 262 now we are going to do the same thing again here go into wheel mode Oops, start charging our projectile, boost, and shoot, 365. Now, what if we, on the other hand, boost when we start charging? Let's just see. So, we boost, start charging, we let go of the boosters. 262. So, there is another case of something that doesn't really work the exact same way as all of the other ones do. Oops, that was not good. Alright, charge the gun once again. And let's see, and boost. And 379 so with the assembler you actually do not have to boost when you click your weapon on the other hand you have to boost when you let go of your weapon phoenix spike projectiles toad fist projectiles with melee weapons the damage is simply going to be applied whenever you boost and you go over that speed and you have contact to the enemy so if you're in contact and you're going over 75 start boosting and you'll get your bonus speed that also counts for the Lancelots, that also counts for the Remedies, the Dragos, the Firebox. With the King Mines, I don't actually think there is a way that we can test that properly and that would do it justice. But the best way to probably expect this to be is like... Eh, probably actually like something... Uh, the Assembler and, and, and melee weapons and stuff. If you're boosting while people run into it then the damage is going to be applied because this is not sort of it's not a projectile in the same way the damage is going to be sort of calculated if an enemy goes over it at least that's my theory on this weapon and that would probably then also count for porcupines or maybe not i'll see if i can uh, let me know what you guys uh, if you have any theory on this if you have tested it yourself i wonder if we can actually do that in an efficient way i think we might be able to so, let's just try that. Let's just try that. We're going to throw a Pokepine onto this bad boy here. The Pokepine is, of course, blocked. So, we're just going to do that again. Going to shoot a Pokepine, which completely and utterly missed. That's always a great thing when that happens. We're going to try that again. Just wait for this to burn down. Come on. There we go. Pork. 
149 damage we're just going to do that one more time because i kind of want to verify just how much this actually deals we could probably put this just a bit further down and let's try one more time nope another miss the inaccuracy of the porcupine makes this hard 183 and i feel like that was somewhat of a direct shot so we are once more gonna gonna take our precautions here and we'll try to boost the weight once this cabin is actually heated down good so we are at the moment moving we're gonna boost shoot stop boosting 175 all right so 175 that is at least not enough like we know for sure that we 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 didn't get any damage bonus there so let's see what happens when we boost while the actual porcupine makes contact there we go perfect oops why did i do that why did i do that <laughs> all right burn away burn away burn away we just want to wait for that heat to run out as well all right so heat has run out we are gonna shoot the pork boost 174 so are the porcupines affected by this at all we have one more thing to do that we can do and that is simply to boost through the full there we go through the full duration duration of the porcupine rolling now this will highly likely not have happen in an actual game ever so whether this is actually a thing is is quite interesting i'm unsure if we are properly aligned here so let's just we want to make this perfect good align ourselves again nope still not the anchor is kind of throwing us off here so we're just going to try to see if we can align the anchor as well something like this perfect good stuff and now we are aligned so we're going to boost again or speed up again here we're going to boost shoot up poke 249 so i think the best quite answer to your question right now is that the porcupine will do it when you are boosting for the full direction di duration so if you for example play this cabin on like three porcupines and some boosters on a build well then you got to be boosting when you run into people and shoot it the mandrake projectile you'll have to boost while you shoot that will also give the damage to the fire itself any of these they're all hit scan they basically just target the enemy so again if you boost while your drones are active then the drones are gonna get the bonus damage and that yeah goes for turrets as well and projectile hit scan projectile actually not sure if Kovo is a hit scan or projectile but you have to shoot boost when you shoot basically just like all of the other ones some of the projectiles scorpion projectile and that's pretty much all the weapons so there you have it that is that took way longer than i expected also by the way but that is a new cockpit cabin and that is how it works with all of the different weapon types that we have in crossout hope you enjoyed this and hope this was a learning experience if it was don't forget to subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye